Well, next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and demonstrate the very mini form of Tai Chi, which is the, really the first um, five name movements, or six. It uh, contains really the most important aspect of Tai Chi. There's the sequence, which is called Grasping Sparrow's Tail, um, is repeated probably nine times in a long form. The reason, there's, a, there's a reason for this that's actually very important, that this sequence is by posture by posture training the same internal manipulations in movement that you are doing in these two Qigong exercises. So you have a series of movements that are reinforcing exactly the same internal changes and manipulations. And because of that, this is sort of like the, it's the foundation and groundwork of, of all Tai Chi. And it's not just of this style of Tai Chi, but of any style of Tai Chi. In any long form, this, this section is repeated many times. Um, the, what I will do is I'll do and demonstrate it front view, um, and then I'll also demonstrate it with a, a back view. And then I'll go through and go through and do it with some stops in the postures and transition points.
I'd like to go through it and, and I'm going to stop at each particular posture, not just postures, but also intermediary points that are not really posture points, but are where there's important transitions and changes that take place. The first is starting out with the opening movement. This movement is sometimes called commencing Tai Chi, and other times it's, it says it's called separating energies or powers. Um, the word in Chinese is Jing, which refers to the different manipulations and of, of the power or strength in Tai Chi. So the first one is developed, and this is called Pung, and it's developed through a sense of sinking. It's as your energy sinks, there's a natural floating of energy as well. So if you start out, it's a really simple way of getting a feel for this, is you just want to allow your lower body to get heavy and sink downwards. And if you notice as you do that, there's a slight natural floating that travels through the arms. Well, this is the first of the four kind of internal changes in Tai Chi that all take place actually in the opening movement. So as you sink and relax, your arms float. You notice what happens as soon as I stop sinking, my arms stop floating. So once you stop, you're sinking down. That, at that point, you're going to change to the next jing. And the reason is, is if you, if you continue to like bring your arms up once you've stopped sinking, actually then you're going to rely on local power from your shoulders, which you don't want to do because you want to keep your body very relaxed as you do that jing. So I'm going to start out by sinking, let my arms flow. As soon as I finish sinking, then I'm going to go from my center, from the Dan Tian, and expand out through my legs, to the top of my head, and out through my hands. Then I'm going to draw everything back into the center. And then I'm going to push down. So if we go through those four again, and sink, let everything float, and push out from the center to the periphery, pull in to the center from the periphery, and push downwards. And these go back then to those four primary manipulations, bringing energy up, going from the center out, from the periphery in, and from the top down. So in the opening movement of the Tai Chi form, you already are separating out those four things. They're going to go into more complex combinations. So first, sinking down, bringing energy up, expanding out, pulling in, and pushing down. Shift to the right, sink down again. Again, expanding out. Drawing in as my arms wrap around. Step, pushing down. Here, it's important to have a sense of pushing from the heel of the left leg, which has no weight in it, up all the way through the top of your head. So there's a sense of the energy going through the back of the leg, up through the spine, through the top of the head. Then I'm going to turn my waist 45 degrees, and as I do, my left foot's going to turn with it. My weight's going to shift to the left, and my hands are going to come to cross. Then I'm going to keep my weight on the left, push with my right leg, turn my waist back to the left, bring my right hand up the edge of the left. At this point, my left fingertip rests on the pulse of my right hand. My weight is still 100% on my left leg. Then I'm going to turn my waist to the right. As I do, my right hand is going to stand so the fingertips face upwards, and I'm going to pivot on the ball of my right foot. And my weight is still on the left. 
then I'm going to step with my right foot, placing the heel of my right foot where the ball is. Then I'm going to push through the heel of the right leg, through the palm of the left hand. I'm going to turn my waist to the right and my hands out. You want to have your hands still on your center line and your left hand rolls to come on top of the right, both palms down. Then I'm going to go and draw everything in to my center and turn to the left. And I'm going to reach a point where my hands are folded on top of one another. Now I'm going to continue to draw in and shift back onto the right foot. As I do, my right hand rolls over. My left hand rests on the pulse again. And then I stretch out. And as I stretch out here, there's several important things. First of all, you want to make sure your pelvic girdle is slightly tucked so you don't have compression in your lower back. Secondly, you want to have a straight line between your back leg and your spine. So there's a slight inclination forward. Now I'm going to sit back, turn right, flatten out my right palm. Turn my foot back 45 degrees, my right foot, bring my palm upright onto my center. Shift right, turning my waist to the right. And then push out, bringing my hands out along the line of my right foot as I turn my waist back to the left. And I'm going to turn my waist again to the right, step, and starting out, step shoulder width, shift, turn to the left until my left hand now lines up with my left foot. Then I'm going to shift back to the center, tucking my pelvis under, extending my arms into single whip. Now if you notice here, that you want to have the two sides of your body symmetrical. Then you pull in the right, pull in the left, open the hands, sink, push out, pull in, and push down. Let's go through the form one more time. 